So the Notre Dame Cathedral was devastated by a blazing inferno. But that was nothing compared to the threat that it now faces from modernist architects. The French Prime Minister, Edouard Philippe, has announced a competition for international architects to rebuild Notre Dame Cathedral's spire. We are not going to rebuild today by mimicry the image of the past. Architecture must represent our time. But surely you don't want to replace the sacred majesty of a 200-year-old Gothic spire which perfectly complemented an 850-year-old cathedral with some vulgar glassy steel monstrosity. Surely you wouldn't even think of- Oh shit! New spire made from crystal glass and stainless steel, just like the dome on the Reichstag. Which looks fucking hideous. But if they just rebuilt it the same, it would be like visiting the Louvre and seeing a copy of the Mona Lisa. No, it would be like visiting the Louvre and seeing this. According to Rolling Stone's E.J. Dixon, Notre Dame is a deep-seated symbol of resentment, a monument to a deeply flawed institution, and an idealised Christian European France that arguably never existed in the first place. That's right, Notre Dame is racist. Maybe we can stick a moon and crescent on top of it. Maybe we can surround it with minarets, you know, to properly exercise that white guilt. I originally said that as a joke, but somebody's actually proposed it. But Paul, wasn't Notre Dame just a symbol of European colonization. Well, it was built 70 years before the first instance of European colonization. So no. Patricio Del Real, an architecture historian at Harvard University, said the building was so overburdened with meaning that it's burning feels like an act of liberation. Yeah, because that's what my first thought would be if my house burned down. I mean, I wouldn't have a home to live in, but just think how liberated I would feel. It would be a travesty to rebuild Notre Dame as a facsimile of the original. No, it wouldn't. In fact, you can go a step further and rebuild it to honor the original plans. Architectural historian John Harwood says the rebuild should be a reflection of who we are now. President Macron says the new look should be consistent with our modern diverse nation. Well, given that your modern diverse nation manifested nearly 900 attacks on Christian churches in 2018 alone, maybe best to leave the diversity out of it. <laughs> And given how modernist architects desecrated St. Michael's Parish in Scotland, turning this into this, it's probably best to take out a restraining order on those with similar ideas and keep them from getting anywhere near Notre Dame. Lest they repeat what happened in Liverpool, where their Catholic cathedral was supposed to look like this, but ended up looking like this. When you order something online versus when it arrives, just thank God Notre Dame's stained glass window survived. Or they could have ended up with this, Cologne Cathedral's south window. An abstract artist used a computer to randomly arrange 11,000 coloured squares into a 100 square metre collage. I would insult it by comparing it to Minecraft, but the Minecraft version actually looks better. So we have an opportunity, now that the Scottish Government have launched a consultation on election arrangements, to give refugees and asylum seekers the right to vote in Scotland. So if you agree with us that refugees and asylum seekers should have the right to vote, respond to the government's consultation. It's out right now, it's live for a couple more weeks. Get your response in there, encourage other people to get their response in there and show once and for all that Scotland is absolutely a country that says refugees are welcome here. <laughs> Thirty years ago, architects set their sights on erecting a penis-shaped skyscraper in the heart of London. Really? I mean, who would even consider allowing a giant sex toy to dominate the skyline of a major city? That's just ludicrous. That's right, it's the Tulip, a 1,000 foot vibrator dominating the skyline of a major city. Its designer, Norman Foster, says it's quote, inevitably controversial. I mean, God only knows why. A giant bell end thumbing its nose up at the population of London. I'm just surprised they didn't name it after Sadiq Khan. And guess who's the favourite to lead the rebuild of Notre Dame? Norman Foster. Oh yeah, and that penis ribbed condom building I mentioned before. Guess who designed that? Norman Foster. Like, dude, seriously. You're 83 years old. Just come out of the closet already. I mean, what's next? Are you going to install vast containers at the top full of jizz so that everyone in the vicinity is soaked with skyscraper spunk? I've seen less phallic symbolism at a pagan May Day parade. You have, ladies and gentlemen, to give this much. 
to the Luftwaffe. When it knocked down our buildings, it didn't replace them with anything more offensive than rubble. We did that. But hey, despite London being deluged by glass and steel dicks, at least you can still see St. Paul's. Unlike Edinburgh's historic Usher Hall, which modernist architects in their infinite wisdom thought it would be a good idea to hide behind this. No, that's not scaffolding. That's what they called a bold and contemporary extension. 20 million quid. Seriously, if you have to construct hideous new buildings, at least don't use them to rape the old ones. Look at what they did to the Rue de Rivoli. Again, don't let these people anywhere near Notre Dame. Speaking of scaffolding, when are they gonna remove it from the outside of the new US Embassy in London? I thought it was finished. Oh, my mistake. That's the actual building. But at least it's in good company. That is the ugliest building. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, certainly in London. It looks like a, just a bunch of chicken cages. Yeah. Well, not free range, innit? <laughs> you, you know, it's like a nightmare. They're all Orwellian, bruv. Yeah. Brave new Matrix, you know. It's called St. George's Wharf and it's so ugly. As Theodore Dalrymple wrote, the British are barbarians, camped out in the relics of an older and superior civilization to whose beauties they are oblivious. Tasmania's Museum of Old and New Art has unveiled a revised plan for a $400 million five-star hotel. Looks kind of like a handgun, doesn't it? Which makes sense, because it makes me want to shoot myself in the head when I see it. The winner of a design competition for a new Senate building in the Philippines looks like four trash cans having sex. Whereas our new buildings used to look like the headquarters of some kind of post-apocalyptic totalitarian dictatorship, they now look like the headquarters of some kind of futuristic post-apocalyptic totalitarian dictatorship. That's progress. As Brianna Rennix writes, the New York Times says this is the building that showed brutalism could be playful. This may be true, but only in the sense that the cat tormenting a mouse or the torturer doing eeny meeny to determine which testicle to zap first is being playful. Now there are so many of these glass and steel behemoths in major American cities that up to one Billion birds die flying into them every year. There are so many reflections, they think a tree reflected in the building is an actual tree. Fly straight into it and die. The 14 most anticipated buildings of 2019. The Shed in New York, a building on wheels that can split into two. Like one wasn't bad enough. Ruby City Art Center in San Antonio looks like some kind of 70s vacuum cleaner accessory. If the Ruby City is any indication of things to come, South Central Texas has a bright future of cultural exploration. What could be uglier than this building? Only the kind of art they plan to display inside it. Taipei Center for Popular Music. When the Taiwanese government was searching for the right design for an all-new music center, they wanted the structure to be not only bold, but instantly recognizable to crowds both domestic and international. Instantly recognizable as what? Crumpled tinfoil National Museum of Qatar. Designed by the inimitable Jean Nouvel, the National Museum of Qatar looks as if it would better belong on another planet. Yeah, what planet was he on when he came up with that design? Not this one. Modernist architecture is a cull of pervasive ugliness. It has no authentic attachment to any place, people, or culture. That's why all modern cities look exactly the same. Is it any wonder that the people who live in them, surrounded by imposing monoliths, radiating tedium and misery, become more depressed year after year? These aren't cherished homes or dynamic places of work. They're storage containers for drones. And we can't overestimate the amount of despair that we are generating with places like this. In their egotistic strive to put their unique stamp on the world, modernist architects have created an environment of bland, monotonous inhumanity. Those who prayed for Notre Dame to be rescued from the fires that nearly destroyed it should keep praying. Because given what modernist architects want to inflict upon this sacred building, Notre Dame may well need to be rescued again. Please click the big red button to subscribe, it really helps me when you do that, and click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video.